Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about three important vitamins that your body needs in order to produce thyroid hormone. If you do not have enough of these, or in other words, if you have a deficiency in any of these three vitamins, your body will not be able to produce enough thyroid hormone. You will then not have enough thyroid hormone in circulation, and you may start to experience these signs of hypothyroidism. This is important for pretty much anybody with thyroid conditions, especially those with low thyroid disease, because these deficiencies are pretty rampant throughout the entire um, thyroid population, okay? So it doesn't really matter what type of thyroid disease that you have, there's a high chance that you have a deficiency in these vitamins, which also means there's an opportunity for you to replace that deficiency and improve your thyroid in a natural way. So let's talk about these top three uh, uh, vitamins and nutrients. So number one is tyrosine. Now tyrosine is a protein, okay? So it's an amino acid. Um, and tyrosine is important because it forms the backbone of thyroid hormone. Now I'm gonna draw a picture here to show and kind of explain this. Um, if you're anybody who is, uh, who is in organic chemistry or something, you're probably gonna get a little upset because this is not true to form, but it's going to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So in, in the thyroid hormone molecule, we have tyrosine and attached to ty tyrosine, which forms the backbone, we have the arms, which in this case will be iodine. So you can see here that iodine is attached to the tyrosine. And in order to make thyroid hormone, that you need this tyrosine and you need these iodine. So we'll be talking about iodine in just a second. Now the drawing that I've really, you know, just sort of made here really roughly, this is a drawing of T4 thyroid hormone, right? And it's T4 because we know, we know that because the number of iodines it has one, two, three, four iodines. That's why T4, that's what it's called here. Now, if we got rid of one iodine, this would be T3 because we'd only have one, two, three iodine. So we're not gonna do that today, but I just wanna show you the difference between these two and show you why tyrosine and iodine are so important. Now, tyrosine, just think of it as forming this backbone that the iodines then attach to, and this being your thyroid hormone. If you do not have tyrosine, you will not be able to produce thyroid hormone. But tyrosine also performs another important function, and that is by creating thyroglobulin. So thyroglobulin is um, another larger protein. It actually consists of about 150 to 200 or so um, tyrosines all attached together in this huge long line. And what, ty what thyroglobulin does is it takes two halves of thyroid hormone and it smashes it together. So if you don't have enough tyrosine, you're not gonna have thyroglobulin um, and that's not, gonna, that's not gonna allow you to create thyroid hormone by smashing those two halves together. You can kind of think of it like this and it's smashing the two sides together. And tyrosine is also required to produce that thyroid hormone because it forms the backbone to it. Now, when it comes to tyrosine, a lot of people, they usually are getting enough because the primary source of tyrosine um, through your diet, it comes through your diet and it comes through uh, consuming enough protein. So if you have a protein rich diet, if you're consuming enough protein, there's chances are pretty high you'll have enough tyrosine. At least you're consuming enough tyrosine. But the problem comes here um, in that tyrosine can be used to create epinephrine, which is an adrenal hormone, melanin, which is found in the skin, and thyroxine or T3 and T4, which is of course what we're talking about here in thyroid hormone. So what ends up happening to some people is they have an increased demand, um, especially in times of stress or in, in, in the case of melanin, if they're exposed to the sun, think about the summer, you're going to have to produce these things and your body needs the tyrosine to produce these hormones um, to, to do the job that they need to do. And so by increasing the demand on tyrosine, you may actually result in a deficiency of tyrosine and that may draw from how much thyroid hormone you are able to um, create because you don't have enough, right? Because you need it for the thyroglobin, you need it for um, the production of thyroid hormone as well. So the magic number here, if you're thinking about uh, um, supplementing with tyrosine is about 150 milligrams. So if you think that you're not getting enough or you think that you're under a high stress situation and you're depleting that tyrosine to produce adrenal hormones or extra, you need it for more thyroid hormone production, you wanna be looking at about 150 milligrams per day of tyrosine in the form of L-tyrosine. So it's a little bit different, but this is the form that you can take um, in supplement form, which will provide your body with that tyrosine that it needs. Okay, so that's tyrosine in a nutshell. Number two is iodine. So I kind of already talked about iodine up here at, um, when we were describing thyroid hormone itself or T4, but iodine really forms the arms of that thyroid hormone molecule. So if you don't have iodine, if you don't have the arms, well, then you're not gonna have thyroid, right? And if you don't have the, the backbone here or the body, you're not gonna have thyroid hormone either. So iodine is very critical for the formation of thyroid hormone as well. As most of you probably know, that, that doesn't come as a surprise to most of you. What might come as a surprise is that iodine deficiency is actually quite common, and that's for three main reasons. So number one is that a lot of people just aren't consuming enough, right? So think about, take stock of how you're getting iodine in your body if you know that the number one source is through sea vegetables. How many of you listening to this are having two to three or even five servings of sea vegetables every single week, right? So a lot of people know that, which is why salt has been uh, fortified with iodine, and that's called um, iodized salt, or whatever. that's basically what that's referred to as iodized salt. 
The problem with iodized salt is that a lot of people aren't even using salt that has iodine in it anymore because they have an irrational fear of iodine, especially if you're a thyroid patient, and because a lot of people are trying to reduce their intake of salt because of their, they believe that it impacts their blood pressure. So you have a lot of people avoiding salt. You have a lot of people not consuming enough iodine in their diets because they're not consuming enough sea vegetables. And you have a lot of thyroid patients who have a fear of iodine because they've been told or they've read somewhere that it's harmful if they take iodine or that it'll destroy their thyroid or cause Hashimoto's or some other cause or some other reason. Now I have a ton of videos explaining why all three of these, well, at least the, the fear of iodine is false. Um, the fact that iodized salt is not being consumed is true. And the fact that people are not consuming enough sea vegetables is true as well. So there is a really good chance that many thyroid patients for all of these reasons or several of them do not contain or are not consuming enough iodine. And because iodine is critical for the formation of thyroid hormone, uh, it's very important that you consume enough, otherwise you're not going to be able to produce enough thyroid hormone. Now, when it comes to supplementing with iodine, I'm a big proponent of it. I think most people are not getting enough. There, you know, you kind of have to get the right amount. So I have other videos kind of explaining that in more detail. You don't want to take too much and taking too little does not going to do anything for you. So it's kind of Goldilocks in the sense that you need just the right amount. But if you're looking for, you know, kind of a, a ballpark of what you should be shooting for, somewhere between 150 and 250 micrograms. So that's MCG of iodine if you want to supplement. If you want to supplement with tyrosine, remember that's L-tyrosine, 150 milligrams. If you want to supplement with iodine, that is, that is uh, 150 to 250 micrograms per day on the low end. Some of those doses can go much higher. We're not talking about high doses today. We're talking about just to make sure that you have enough to produce that thyroid hormone. Then number three is something that a lot of people don't consider, and that is iron. So iron is important because it catalyzes or it's important or it's required for a protein or an enzyme called thyroid peroxidase. And thyroid peroxidase is working inside of your thyroid gland to help thyroglobulin do its job. And so basically what happens is if you don't have enough iron, then thyroglobulin is not gonna be able to jam those two halves of thyroid hormone together. You're not gonna be able to produce thyroid hormone in that way. So it's not important in the, the building of the thyroid hormone itself, like iodine and tyrosine that are, but what this does is it helps produce it by smashing it together, by making, by catalyzing that reaction and helping that reaction to occur. Now, you'll probably remember if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, that people who have Hashimoto's have antibodies to thyroglobulin, which we've talked about up here, and also thyroid peroxidase, which is another protein. So these are two proteins found inside the thyroid gland, um, which can be impaired if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So I'm just throwing that out there. In the case of iron, it helps that thyroid peroxidase do its job. In fact, it's required for that. So if you don't have enough iron, you're not gonna be able to produce enough thyroid hormone. Now, in the case of thyroid patients, it gets a little more alarming because low thyroid function also leads to decreased absorption of iron. And then when you don't have enough iron, you're not able to produce enough thyroid hormone. So you have this vicious cycle of decreased thyroid function due to low iron, which then causes decreased iron absorption, which causes more low iron, which causes decreased thyroid um, function as well, and so on and so on and so on. So you kind of cascade in a negative spiral downward. But having said that, not everybody should, who has thyroid problems should take iron. You should only take it if you actually need it. So you need to make sure that you test for this. So I cannot give you a range of, of dosing that you should take because it depends on whether or not you're sufficient or um, you're, you, you have a deficiency. You'll have to check that and you can do that by ordering your iron studies and by looking at something called ferritin. So make sure you look for those if you have thyroid disease. I recommend everybody who has a known diagnosis or a suspected diagnosis of hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's or any low thyroid condition, get this checked. You have to look at your iron for that reason. Now, another thing to consider is that your menstrual cycle, if you are a woman, will impact your iron status. So it's much more likely that if you have, especially if you have heavy cycles or heavy flow, that you are going to be iron deficient because you're losing a lot of that iron through that menstrual cycle, through that flow, right? Because it's in, it's involved and in, uh, it's inside of your red blood cells. So if you have uh, a syndrome where you have heavy cycles or you're bleeding more often for any reason, you definitely wanna be looking at your iron, especially in light of how it functions or how it impacts thyroid hormone creation through thyroid peroxidase. So these are the big three that I would say that most people don't consider. I guess most people know about iodine, but you may not understand how tyrosine functions um, or how iron helps your body produce thyroid hormone. Now, the good news is, if you have a deficiency in any of these, replacing that def deficiency will help your body produce more thyroid hormone and it will make that process more effective. So do not neglect these uh, for pretty much any reason. As long as you have a thyroid gland, these nutrients and these vitamin deficiencies, if present, are very important and you, they can be solved simply by taking the right supplement um, in the right form. So uh, if you have any questions about that, leave them in the comments below. And if you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. If you found this information helpful, I think you'll love that information as well. So that's all I have for you guys. And otherwise, I will see you in the next one.